Hello and welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 and the survival series. Right, so I'm just checking out the sheep just to make sure everything's fine. They've got enough feed. I haven't really had to look after these much. They're not consuming a lot of the feed. They really aren't. I mean, it's getting down, but I think I've only actually ever put I think two bales now into these, into the sheep. Chickens um, did run out of feed for a little bit, so I've had to give them that, but that's a shame because their health went down. Um, but I've sorted that out now. Cows are doing all right. So the 35 cows that we got, you can see they've already produced 5,000 liters of milk, and that's excellent news. And we still got, well, we still got 16,000 liters of food, but only 2,898 liters of of, of uh, TMR left. Uh, but overall, look at the the sheep as well. Need a bit of water soon. Probably do that the next day at least. Uh, but grass slash hay really don't consume much. Uh, but then again, we're not getting massive amounts of wool. We really aren't. We've got two waiting on here. So that's 2,000 litres of wool. Uh, but we haven't got much. So a bit of an update on the silage that we did. The, the bales. Got a lot of them bales. I have hauled 15 here. And all I need to do is unload them into this area where we store the bales. So these are the ones we're going to keep. There's still quite a lot out in the fields that I haven't touched. But they're all fermented now and ready to uh, either use or sell. But we're not going to touch the ones in the field just yet because we're going to try and sell that and the silage in the bunker which we've got a lot of uh, all at the same time so around january and december that's when we're going to be selling everything same with the corn we're also going to hold back on the wool that we're probably going to sell around april so hopefully we'll get at least another pallet fingers crossed maybe two uh, but overall we're doing well i did actually as well check to see if we've got any eggs but we are sitting at 401 pieces, so we're not much at all on the eggs. Um, and that is literally just because this, this chicken pen does not hold many chickens at all. It's already maxed out. So we're doing all right on the animal side, but we're, we're kind of slow going. But the milk, on the other hand, is really good news. I mean, it's now October, so we've gone through pretty much the month of September and we've got 5,000 litres I'm just going to actually check when the best time to sell milk is. We can sell it right now at 757, but that's not what we want to do. We want to try and take it. I mean, 761 is the maximum. September is the best time. You know, and it is on its way down. So it might make sense to sell unless we hold back until December. But I'm thinking it could be a good idea to sell it as soon as possible, really. The 5,000 litres that we've got. Or maybe just storing it and uh, trying to take a, a lot of it in one go. But. I mean, currently we haven't got big capacity when it comes to anything liquid-wise, so um, I'd have to figure this out. But that's not going to be the main focus of this episode. We are going to get through and do the corn. Both fields are now ready to harvest, so we're going to try and do that. Now, I do also want to point out that my money in the last episode was around a 1,000, but I have taken one trail load of logs, and I've got a second one here. So we're already at 12,000 from that, and I think now... This is the amount of trees that I'm going to chop down to put in a field for root crops. So if we just shoot up in the air, I'll be able to show you exactly what it's going to look like. So that's pretty much what I'm thinking, that size. The whole area there is going to be just for root crops, and we're going to try and get the, the required equipment. Potatoes or sugar beet, depending on what we can afford, and we're going to try and plant it in. Now, if we have a, an also a quick look at the time that we should be planting that kind of stuff we can see that it is pretty much the start so we're going to need to get some money behind us to at least buy a planter for sugar beets and potatoes straight after the winter months so it's something we need to get straight onto um, but we can do that and I think this is probably just the right starting size to do some root crops I think it will be spot on so we'll quickly just take this trailer load up of logs we'll get that sold and then we'll come back and we'll get set up to do the harvest. So I have decided that I'm going to try out the new trailer when we do the corn harvest. Probably don't need it to be that big for the capacity. Um, I don't think we'll get that much really. We'll get more than we, use, we usually do from the other crops we've done. Because it does give off more but it pays less. So it kind of balances itself out. Uh, but... I think we may as well try out the new trailer just to get used to it. We'll stick it on the Landini as soon as we sold this. And then we'll set up 
as well, the harvester. We're gonna obviously hope that we can use a bit of course play as well. Maybe do a bit of a montage. Uh, let's just take the strapping off. There we go. So let's see what we get for this. So we got 9,000, so that's pretty good going. We're sitting at 21,000. I have still got them three pallets there. I really do need to start taking some of these um, logs and turn them into the pallets. But the only thing that's putting me off with it is wanting a proper pallet fork or um, a forklift, really. That would be ideal, just so we don't have any issues when we're loading onto it. But we have got a better load all now compared to the, the wheel loader I had before, and that was really problematic. It did not like picking up pallets at all. So I'm hoping that it works a lot better now if we tried the load all, but we might get a chance to bring it up, test it out on them three before we even think about trying to move over to the pallets of wood. Because I think if we do move over to the pallets of wood, it just makes more sense. We're going to get a lot more money from it. It's going to probably take longer to do. It's not going to be instant cash as we take the wood up and just sell it. But it's going to benefit us. That extra bit of work is going to mean that we get see a lot more money from it um, and as we're getting close now to the boundary of the field uh, that we own in the woodland area we're gonna need to maximize our income from them logs because soon it's all gonna run dry and that's why we're trying to get more fields and get cows we want to try and get ourselves a nice re reliable source of income going forward after we've uh, pretty much chopped all the trees down uh, that we can so there we go, we're all hooked up to the, the cane trailer. I think it is a cane trailer, I'm sure it is. Yes. Um, so we'll start off with this field first. We'll start off at the one by the cow area. And uh, it is weirdly the small of the two. When I did set this up originally, I thought it might be larger, but it is weirdly a lot smaller. Well, not a lot, but it is smaller. So we can't do straw off this unfortunately so we do need a bit of straw hopefully to try and maximize um, our feed tmr production but, but i think without the hay anyway we don't need to even worry about that and we can do hay pretty quick as soon as we get to like the end of spring start of summertime we're going to be doing a lot of hay anyway so tmr won't be an issue so let's start it off Probably, in fact, yeah, we'll start it off on the side. We're not going to get a straw. We don't need to worry about that. Um, but we do need to make sure we open everything up. Lower the header down. And uh, just get cracking. And we'll try and do a bit of this manually. And we'll just see how it gets on. It's going to take a while with this harvest. It really is. It's not the biggest header for this because of the fact that one headers are usually smaller. But we're obviously using a small harvester as well we can't really put anything too beefy on this we're already do doing all right we're nearly 15 percent full i do like harvesting corn so all we need to do is hope that this brings in more cash what we've been getting in the past two harvests from the grains that we've been doing i think we did a bit of canola as well but it never really brought in enough money to shout out right home about I mean I think we got some good cash from the silage that's always worth continuing the harvesting that we've been doing has never been that good now I do know on hard difficulty you do see a real hit it does affect your harvesting it doesn't affect like the production side of things too much I think you can still make quite a lot of money from milk and wool if you've got enough sheep but it really does hit harvest inside quite a lot when you go on to hard difficulty they tend to put a lot of work into these fields and then when you go and sell the grain or the crop that you're doing it really pays off it's a, it is a real slog a bit of a grind I don't mind, I don't mind that because we are making a killing from logging and we're setting ourselves up pretty well so if we can get around here we'll open up the pipe on the other side I think should be fine, we're at fit about 60%. We'll try and do, because it's not a massive header, I'm probably going to try and do about three, at least three headland passes, and then we'll start working on the centre. 
just need to bear in mind. You don't want to miss bits like them there. So when you miss corn in a field, it stands out. It's strange that they don't allow you in Farmer Simulator to do corn straw as a base, part of the base game. You can get some mods that allow it, but it's quite common to have straw from corn. So it's a bit strange that they don't allow you to do that. So we're about 96% there. So let's get ourselves under this. I'm hoping this, this trailer will fit. I think it just might fit. There we go. So while this is unloading, I'll tell you about a, a bit of an investment that I put into the channel. Uh, so in FS19, I got myself a G29 steering wheel. I used it a lot near the end of series that I was doing on FS19 but as I went into FS22 I kind of moved back onto the controller just to the ease of things uh, but I really wanted to try out manual gear shifting um, never had the gear shifter to do that uh, get set up again with, with the steering wheel pedals all that kind of stuff get it all um, nicely set up so it's not so much of a burden when I've got like a boom going across me and I'm recording the videos um, so what I decided to do was I purchased the, the Logitech driving force shifter so I haven't set up just yet but, but I have got it and I'm gonna try out I'm gonna try start doing some manual gears and see how it goes really yeah. I'm pretty um, interested to, to do it like that. I, might, I think I might enjoy it a lot more by shifting through the gears as well I think it will be a game changer because I know in FS19 when I used this steering wheel it really did change the game for me it made it a lot better so I am interested to see how it, how it improves by having a natural shifter as well for gears I've also got the, the Logitech flight uh, joystick as well um, so we're going to use that as well hopefully for um, some hopefully on, on front loaders and tally handlers anything really like that will be perfect for it so if we try and get the full setup and I'll try and position it really well this time so I can have the boom going across um, and it, nothing's covering my monitors um, it's going to be difficult to fire but I'm hoping I can figure it out so let me know in the comment section if anyone else is using manual gears if you've got any shifters if you've also got any recommendations for me because I'm going to be completely new in manual gears on here do I need to set it up in a certain way uh, if anyone's done it before yeah I'm really interested to know what your tips are for that so we're doing alright on yield so far. We've already filled up the harvester once. We're now at 27. About halfway through on a second headland. And I'm actually, actually really enjoying this corn harvest. Good to do something different. And I think we might set up as well as a course play at some point on up and downs. I might actually try the in-game worker just to do up and down see how he, see how he fares and we can do the uh, the carting and then we're, as we go to the second field we'll set that up fully within course play and uh, we'll do water drive as well on the trailer we'll see how he gets on it's going to be difficult because it's a tight tight field really there's not much room on the on the boundaries of the field so I've never actually done auto drive on that field with the, within the survival series. I have used the course plate, done the loading manually at the same time and done a bit of a montage, but we'll try and use auto drive and see how it gets on. Right, so I've just done four headland passes and I'm starting on the up and down. Uh, I decided to just do this manually myself. This field, I thought, why not just do it manually? I'm using it a little bit of the vehicle control add on, um, GPS system get close to that aren't we so let's just scoot that over Oof, just about yeah so we're gonna just go through this ourselves. do like this I really do it's old school harvester in a cornfield it just it just feels right when you're doing corn with an old school harvester A bit strange having a header that looks a lot newer on it, but it would have been nice if this bison had the option to uh, also have a corn header with it. But maybe, maybe they don't really do much corn 
in the countries where these bisons are common. Uh, but it's, it's actually getting through this field really quick. And we're doing well with the trailer. It's about, I'd say, 50% full, I think it was. Uh, let's actually just have a look. Always go the wrong way. So we're at 42%, so we're close. Not quite at 50%. We'll definitely fill the trailer up once anyway, when we do both of these fields. So I'll carry on with this, I'll try and get the majority of it done, and probably cut back in near the end, and then I'll give you a bit of an update on where we are with the yield, and then we'll move over, like I said, and set everything up on the other field. Right, so we're at the last strip. And it's not been a bad yield. For this field, I think we're around, probably getting close to about 14, 15,000 litres. Which isn't bad at all. I have decided to drop off all the corn that's sitting in the trailer currently. And then we can keep it empty. And then I think it probably won't need to be emptied um, during the course play and auto drive combination which saves me doing a route to the silo because I haven't actually set that up yet with course play um, with auto drive sorry so it, it, it does make more sense to do that um, let's just scoot back over to here and we can close these eventually we can also clear off that course um, and then what we can do is set all drive to go to the other field we're taking the, the corn to the silo we want to be going to crop field one off you go and hopefully it'll work a treat and then if we go back not to that one don't want that we want this yeah so we're 16,423 which isn't bad because the other field's bigger so we're going to be over the 30,000 mark which is good news have we got something in the way blocking it Interesting. Ah, so that fence needs sorting out. It really does. How strange is that? It's, it's colliding on something there. Maybe that fence just needs pushing in a little bit. There we go. And I think 30,000 litres of corn isn't bad for the size field we're, we're running. We obviously get a lot more corn. So let's just drop it in the silo. We're not going to sell it yet, so we may as well store it in this really old silo. We probably need to upgrade the harvester at some point as well, especially if we keep going and trying to get bigger fields. But we're a long way off that yet. And they cost so much as well, the bisons, the uh, the next generation of bison that we were talking about when choosing that harvester. They do cost a good chunk of cash, but let's just hope that we, we start generating money from all sources. Um, have I sent it to the wrong field? I probably have. I think I might have. I'm getting confused. See, it should be going to there, so I don't know why. It's decided to do that, which is strange, so I'll have to check that out. So we'll do this manually. We'll, I think it just makes sense to do it manually. Unless there's some kind of problem with it going straight on at this point. Yeah, there is. So I've never actually set up, would you believe, a link between them two. I'll be honest, I don't know how I've not done that. Unless I've changed it some, some time whilst uh, updating it. But there we go. Now it should work perfectly fine next time. So what I'll do now quickly is I'll set course play up and auto drive. Um, and then this should work a treat. Course play, we've done it before in this field so it won't have any issues at all. Right, so there we go. I've set everything up. Auto drive's all set up as well to unload. 
um, it doesn't need to go to the salad but I have set it to a waypoint close to the salad just in case it does need to tip out but I'd be very surprised if we fill up the trailer now uh, even though this field is a pretty good size it's not big enough to fill the trailer so I think now is a perfect time for me to stick in a montage of this field and the guys working in it with the harvester and also the carting Right, so there we go that is the whole field harvested um, and we've also harvested the other one we just picked up 17,260 litres from that one so we definitely got a bit more from that field not a massive amount so they are pretty similar really but that's just a tad bit bigger so we'll drop it off in the salad we'll have a look exactly how much we've got but we've done pretty well it's going to take two trailers to sell it which isn't too bad as well you don't have to worry about doing too many trips. Kind of part the hurl in, in an awkward position there. So yeah, let's just tip this in. And then yeah, 17,000 litres to go on top of the 16 odd thousand we already had. Doing pretty well for corn. And as you can see in the bottom right, it'll tell us 33,682 thousand litres which is pretty pretty good so like I said we'll save that now until the right time to sell and hopefully give us a good influx of cash it won't be a massive because corn doesn't pay that much but it's definitely a lot more yield than what we got previously we'll have to compare it to see how much money we made from doing I think we did I can't remember exactly what crop we did last time in them two fields but could have been canola so I don't think we did any straw, so it might have actually been canola. Uh, but we definitely got a good yield from that, and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and hopefully we'll be looking at the, the root crops next. So probably going to jump forward now. Next episode will be around silage time when we sell that. I think that's the next step. Um, and then we'll start looking at some equipment. I think that'll be a good idea. Some small equipment. I am thinking of going really vintage on the root crop that we end up doing. Try and do sugar beets, because I think it pays more. Um, but if we do potatoes, that's still pretty good going. But we'll definitely go with some old school vintage equipment that is definitely going to be on the small scale. So um, it should be good. So I think on that note, I am going to leave the video there. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up because that does help my channel out. And if you're new, don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this one on Farming Simulator.